So everybody and welcome back to the channel. This is another die cast review of this beautiful collection that is arriving here in Italy. They are all models I think provided by Burago for the model Formula One and uh, Ixo or Ebro for the vintage car for the older Formula One car that is the one that I prefer, that I like best, you know. So this is the a model that I already showed you on my channel. Not exactly this model, but this uh, subject, you know, because I showed on my channel the Studio 27 Ferrari Formula 187-88C. Uh, the model that uh, I showed you was made uh, by Studio 27. 27 is in Italian, sorry, Studio 27, and uh, it was driven by Michele Alboreto. Uh, in the same season, you know. Instead, this is the die-cast version of this collection that I think you can find also somewhere around Europe or probably also in the modeling shops under the brand of Ixo model, made in 124 scale. They are, of course, fantastic subjects and uh, the price is constantly a bargain, you know, because this stuff you pay 25 euros. Now, this is the series that have the showcase. They provide a little showcase so it's the 5 euro in difference is uh, it's just this showcase it is very beautiful you know very very nice and clean indeed if, if you don't find it broken because very easy in this little kiosk selling newspaper that is still have in Italy I don't know they can keep on living you know with this uh, type of business but they do uh, it's very easy that the space is not so much it's very very easy that you find that the showcase quite cracked you know so you have to be uh, extremely careful when you pick up some of these items and you neither can uh, complain so much because like it happened to me exactly this morning this is the the beginning of february 2024 when i am making this video and uh, it was a little little bit a nightmare you know to obtain uh, this model from the guy working there because for me it was simply so easy when i look on the website on their website uh, this is a uh, centauria editor is a probably a fake name of the Agostini that was one of the biggest editor we had in Italy about this type of collections, you know. And uh, so I constantly go to the guy and book the model because I'm, I'm, a, I'm a sure customer that I buy the items. So I, you will have no surprises if you keep the stuff apart from me, like I had it in my shop and the people tell me, okay, wait a little, wait a little, wait a little. And then the stuff remains in the shop for weeks if not for months, that it was a true, sad, a true story that really happened to me when I had my shop in Milano. So he know me, he know that if I say, okay, this, this, keep this item apart for me, I will surely come and I will surely buy it because for me this is, as I always say in my videos, a bargain item, you know, for the price that they ask for, this is absolutely something that you cannot miss. Also the way that I collect them and I save them in my personal collection is always like brand new you know if you see my video you see that i never keep it away the plastic uh, uh, part that is coming for the transportation of the model of course the model will be nicer if you simply unscrew they have the typical uh, triangle screw that is not so difficult to take it away with an ordinary flat screwdriver you can take it off so it is not so necessary to have the specific head for the screwdriver to take it off so a little uh, uh, it is not so difficult to take it away absolutely and uh, the model itself is a fantastic car this was the i think it was the last formula one turbo made in uh, uh, you know like from the name 1987 to 1988 so basically it was exactly the same car they changed something slightly different i go by memory when i started the previous model that i made from studio 27 in racing and i think the difference was mostly in the air intake that the previous version didn't add so in reality it also happened all the story of the car is also reported inside this very very nice and interesting uh, little book that they provide together with the item even at the same price so if you get it all together so it's absolutely interesting and uh, they have a lot of nice detailed pictures so it's, uh, it's really it's really simple you know so you don't have to dig for uh, documentation of back in time when this car was the race in Ferrari so it was a lot of newspaper talking about this and the technical about the model you know this is just strictly it's just a stuff of three four pages around that you know with some nice decent picture and also the fact that the car was dedicated 
1988 in this model, this car was dedicated to the memory of Enzo Ferrari that died the 14th of August in 1988, I remember the day, and it was something really, really uh, particular for Italians, you know, because this was an, two important guys that lately became a kind of religious owner, you know, because it was something so big, it was so near to God, we used to say, it was somebody that was so untouchable, you know, was a kind of... Uh, uh, Godfellas guy, you know, with black sunglasses and all the Enzo Ferrari he wrote some books that are absolutely a masterpiece. So if you are inside motorsport and if you like this type of publication, it's I really suggest to write to read the book that he wrote, not the biographies or the other writers write about him. He write books about pirates, about his life experience. So it was something really, really interesting to 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 know and to read, you know. So the car was dedicated to him and. Uh, this was also indeed the model take everything i say with the, the benefit of the dub you know i'm not so sure about what i'm saying but i go by memory because this model i didn't study anything here i started when i made the other model and uh, and i start to look about the history of the other model you know that was the car driven by michele alboreto this was the gerard berger and um, this was the only car raced in monza that was not the Monza car, this was, uh, this is meant to be the Monza car, and in the Monza configuration, it was the only from configuration where this uh, F187 had the silver line around the rims, you know, because usually the rim over this Ferrari was com was completely semi-gloss black, uh, as I did in, in that model, and uh, in this model instead they really featured what, uh, I think it was the last winning of the Ferrari, I think it was winning from, I think they won in Monza that year, so this is surely the car that they used in, uh, in Monza. As you can see, there is a mysterious panel lining, I don't know if it is a real volunteered panel lining about the front end, or it is just because the Zamak material they use for the model is a little bit dark, and uh, there is no panel line in the, in the rear side. In my opinion, the waste gate should be made a little better, you know, because I go by memory. On what I did on the other models, so you know, of course, you cannot pretend the same level of details of a Studio 27 model, you know, that's also a little bigger, you know. But this is absolutely, as I said, something that you have absolutely to buy. So, because these are they, they, they made in the Italian uh, Centauri website and made all the scheduling of the production of these cars, and there is some masterpieces arriving, you know, like for example, the 126 C2B. That was the shortest one driven by René Arnoux, Patrick També. So it was the cars used after Gilles Villeneuve in 83, 84. So I like a lot of this, uh, this years of Formula One, you know. The model is absolutely, uh, absolutely one of the must. In my opinion, these 80s vehicles are some of the nicest ever of the collection, you know, because I like so much this era. And I see that they, they improved so much compared to the production made by Borago, the wheel, the tire. They are never the... The, the, the beautiful tire that you can find in a model made by Tamiya or made by yourself if you are a modeler, a little rework, a little sand, but this is absolutely a great base. They improved a lot this type of detail. You see that you basically you cannot see any longer the central line of the mold, absolutely not. They increase it. There is constantly, also here, you see the defect on the front right wheel that is constantly bended, and I think, I think is because of this protection here you know i am not willing to open the car to display the car and just keep them like they are for my personal pleasure just to see them and then collect simply collect them as you can see also the assembly of the rear wing is not so precise as in an ordinary handmade kit you see it's completely bended and this is not a fault of the guy of the newspaper shop you know it's really probably a little bit uh, badly assembled you know you cannot pretend so much for the price that they are giving for of course if you want it's another to just bend them a little with your fingers but uh, once again i think there's no need to improve so much these models you know there is some people that buy and you can find that on ebay actually the correction they can put to have the marlboro little writings over here under the name of the pirate because in some races they used to have also the the, the marlboro logo and so on of course there is no carbon fiber this was already a car in 1987 and 1988 
they were already cars completely featured in carbon fiber all over so the front wing was carbon fiber the rear wing was completely a piece of carbon fiber and of course all the cockpit was full of carbon fiber i remember that they had to fix a couple of times as well as the details of the uh, main seat is not so uh, well done at the rest of the level of the model this is something really disappointing when you see such a beautiful model you see how beautiful also is the paint the paint in this example that i have here they are absolutely fantastically done they also made a blue little windshield that was so typical in this vehicle so i remember when the car was uh, racing you know really remember the days it was still around I was a little kid but i had my my granddad that was a car mechanic it was a truck car mechanic so we used to uh, look it together eating beans and drinking a little wine you know in front of them and every time giving the, the the worst luck ever to renault and in this year you know being the last year of the turbo era uh, it was the mclaren i think it was the era with uh, senna and prost uh, that they took uh, the, the record of the winning you know there was uh, something that had been overtaken just i think by schumacher in the, in the 20 years later you know but it, that was the year when uh, the mclaren was absolutely unbeatable you know and this was still the uh, point the crossing point between the turbocharged instead the c of the number 88 c means for uh, compress a uh, compress in italiano means uh, uh, featuring a turbo turbo motor you know because this was still the last evolution of the v6 uh, used by Gilles Villeneuve in 1982 they started from 1982 till 1988 to have uh, increasing the powerful you know and I just remember that for the waste gate that was cutting the power you know they had a kind of uh, crossing by regulamentation in that years so the original horsepower that was uh, I think around 900 horsepower from the 1986 car they started to switch to 600 650 horsepower plus the regulamentation about the a fuel tank that cannot be so big so you cannot increase so much the power and it was something to have a balance between the companies that were, were already switching to the uh, ordinary motors without the without the compression without the turbo compressor that will start from 1999 uh, in that season and arriving until i think it was 2014 but they restarted to have the turbos between they started the hybrid session now with the half electrical and the all the shit that the modern formula one features inside and became in much big became completely starships compared to this uh, uh, to this star they were anyway absolutely absolutely fantastic subjects so the model once again is absolutely spotted on there is some lovely details also if you see inside the air intakes this was so typical of this model you see look like a photo etcher part there is absolutely no real photo etcher parts in this model but they look like that so it's absolutely well done inside the side air intakes and the overall shape i have several clients that ask me for shape in the cars you know this is absolutely taken you see how great it was and the look was absolutely breathtaking it was a fantastic car it was absolutely very very nice nice ferrari and the, the the model is absolutely fantastic i don't have any longer in my hands the model that i made in 120 from studio 27 because it was uh, delivered to the commitment you know and uh, i could not have it any longer in my hands to make a comparison between them i would like to but i absolutely cannot so that's it else again i i always tell you guys for the price that they ask asking you for this stuff this is a stuff that uh, i said before it cost 25 euros this costs 30 euros basically like 30 dollars i think is a bargain price to have it usually for 30 dollars you buy decal from studio 27 united by a wheel in 124 scaling if you are searching for stuff made in resin and so on so this is absolutely something that if you can collect them and it's starting to become a little bit tricky honestly to have them because uh, as i was telling you in the beginning of this video i was asking the guy in the kiosk selling this uh, the, the, this model i was going to say this year but this is just the model of course before youtube give me the, the red the red flag you know and uh, it was ordinary tricky because uh, he told me that there is in the area three guys like me asking every time for the same type of model so it, I, I probably know one is was absolutely my ex-colleague that also he loves so much these items you know and uh, and another guy that is living in the area that was a client of mine and uh, i remember him and they know that he like this type of model but they only delivered one of these models so the first one that booked it get it and it was me so it's a little bit complicated despite this is actually the stuff that you find around you know if you start to go around for this type of kiosk and asking and asking you surely will cross somebody that have this model for sale but 
it's complicated, you know, it's not so easy. Also because they, they advise it in this uh, in the website of this company that currently in this moment of the year there is the war uh, going down around uh, the entrance of the of the Red Sea. So all the ships coming from China, this is stuff anyway, build it up in China. I think it was built up in Bangladesh. Uh, they cannot travel around the Red Sea and cross the Suez Channel and enter in the Mediterranean. So all the stuff have to make the circumnavigation of Africa. And it takes, I think, a couple of months more to arrive in the Mediterranean. So it means that all the scheduling, this was a model that should be in the, in the, in the shops about one month ago. And indeed it was not because of this reason. So they are making... They are, they are having a lot of troubles, you know, the price of the container increases a lot, so it is quite, quite kind of complicated and extremely messy to have this model, so they are becoming complicated to have also here. If you can find it, if you are living in Europe, if you have any contact from Italy that can provide to you this type of item, even paying them more, because the ordinary price of this stuff I see in the, when we do exhibition and uh, showcases and so on, what we call it Mercativi here in Italy, the price of this stuff arrive very very easy to be $60, $80 depending from the subject, you know. I think one of the most appreciated subjects, it was the 156-85, it was the Alboreto car that they made in the previous collection, the one without the solid showcase over that, it was the other one, basically it is this collection that now changed into legendary race cars, they don't have any longer the Formula 1 sponsorship, so they have to change name to the collection, but it is this, exactly this year, you know, they made the same car that now is arriving in this year, they are from the same editor, but they are slightly different, and there is just this five dollars of difference in the price that is given just by this plastic showcase. Plastic showcase that if you are a little bit skilled, you can also find by extra suppliers about this, so it's not so complicated, it's absolutely a must because it allows you to show you really, really better the car, you can see the model so easy, so it's absolutely something that if you have that other collection, it's better that you start to search around and start to grab it and use it for your models. That's it. For me, this is a fantastic car. Once again, I had a, you know, a blast in the heart, despite... Uh, sorry, Gerard, I hope you will never see my video and you will never complain about that. This was Alboreto car, in my opinion, so they choose to make this car in the Gerard Berger configuration. It was, I think, the first year of Gerard Berger here, after Nigel Mansell have denied his uh, presence in the Ferrari until the 1990 season, you know, with a mighty lion from UK, from the Man Island, arrived to Italy and he became uh, so loved by all the tifosi. So, in the meantime, we had to take Gerard Berger, that in the meantime, if I'm not wrong, had an RFP crash in Imola in 1980, 1989, if I'm not wrong, you know, at the Tamburello, exactly the turn where Ayrton Senna died five years later. He had an horrific crash with the F8189 and uh, he barely survived because he was lucky about the fireman that was very, very near to him and they saved him from an ugly horrific crash. There is the video on YouTube, you can absolutely find it. It was really, really a miracle that he didn't die in that crash, you know. And so we had Gerard for uh, uh, four years, uh, three, four years in this uh, racing with Ferrari. Then he went on with other companies, you know, but it was absolutely not at the level of, of course, Nigel Mansell and not so loved to the tifosi like Nigel Mansell or even better, Michele Alboreto was, you know, in the in the 80s, 80s back in time. Also, I think it was the last car driven by Michele Alboreto before he stopped his career at Ferrari with all the drama that he had during the seasons, you know, when they basically stole the championship to him for the changing of the turbo parts inside his car, so he barely switch from a completely winning car to a car that was absolutely crap so that's part of the formula one history search around everything that i tell you and you will have very very interesting uh, stuff to read about these fantastic models you know as i said absolutely worth it fantastic car everything was absolutely worth it, the money they asked for great well done thanks for watching see you in the next